Hello everyone, this is going to be a long video so let's get right into it. My notebook for my 2019 bullet journal is from Redco and as you can see in the little comparison clip it is slightly smaller than the A5 size that I had used last year and that is typically used. It does come with a built-in index, a pocket, and it has numbered pages which was something I really wanted for this year's book. All you really need for a bullet journal is a notebook and a pen or pencil, but I like to use a variety of supplies to make it a bit more artsy. Here are some of them. One of the first things I set up was my 2019 at a glance or the yearly calendar. This is definitely the most tedious page in the whole book to create because it's a lot of numbers, a lot of writing, and a lot of double checking to make sure the dates are correct. And you will see that I do draw everything out in pencil first to minimize the amount of mistakes that are made. Whiteout is great, but these pages are an off-white color, so mistakes can be pretty noticeable even with that. But I got through this page without any major issues and decided to use my month stamps for the names of the months instead of writing it out. And this looks much neater than my handwriting would have been. After that, I just erased the pencil lines before going in with a micron pen to separate the months a bit better. Then I went straight into working on the page next to it, which will be my 2019 in pixels page. Last year I did a 2018 in pixels and I really liked the way it turned out, but using markers to distinguish the different colors for each mood didn't give me enough flexibility with showing how I actually felt. So this year I am trying a gradient using colored pencils instead, and in my mind each color represents the different moods. So. Yellow would be happy, orange is stressed, red is angry, green is more of an average day, blue for sad, you get the idea. This page is probably the second most tedious because of drawing out the grid and blocking out the proper dates, but I'm really happy with how it turned out and I especially like this pixel heart. The pixel heart is always my favorite part of the My Year in Pixels page. I did use markers to color in parts of the page, but I will be using the colored pencils when I'm filling out each day. The next page or pages I'm working on is something that I saw Amanda Rach Lee do in her bullet journal for last year and this year actually, and that is a year in Polaroids. My boyfriend got me an HP sprocket for my birthday last year and I loved including pictures in my bullet journal last year and I think this is the perfect way to include those in the bullet journal and kind of look back on something that represents each month of the year. So what I did for the pages was use some watercolors to make a sort of galaxy design, and then I traced the Polaroids using the Micron pen to make individual spots for each month, and then I used my monthly stamps to put a stamp of the name of the month in each block, so I have one for each month of the year, and then the Polaroid will go right inside each of the blocks once that month comes and goes. 
the next page is arguably one of the most important pages in the 2019 setup because it is my resolutions and goals for 2019. As you can see, I did take a piece of printer paper because the year in pixels markers did bleed through the page a lot and I wanted to cover that up. Instead of making a list of resolutions this year, I wanted to use pictures and once I feel like I've accomplished the task or at the end of the year, I am going to color in each of the images. So I started out with making different blocks for each of the different resolutions and goals and then I'm going to do a little doodle to represent each of the goals I have. So let's talk about some of them. One of the major goals I have is to read 52 books this year, one for each week of the year. Last year my goal was 24 and I accomplished that exactly, so hopefully I can do this. <laughs> there was one year I read 48 books, so it doesn't feel like too much of a stretch. I want to work out for 30 minutes three times a week. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Last year I failed miserably. I want to move out of my parents' house, which should happen within the next few months. I want to find a job in my field. I'm not sure how likely that will be for this year, but we're setting it as a goal anyway. I hope to post one video per week, at least on YouTube, to save money to get my life a bit more organized, because right now I feel like I am all over the place. I want to do one second every day. I got the app on my phone and I've started doing that already. And in general, I want to do more of what makes me happy and less things that I just have to do or that are for other people. Right now, I feel like all my time belongs to other people and I want to kind of turn that around this year. Next, I am working on the future log. I decided to just make this a two-page spread because I don't think I'm going to need that much space for events. Um, so I kept it pretty basic with just the month name and then a rectangle to put in important dates and things that I need to remember that will be coming up, such as doctor's appointments, holidays, things like that. Next is the books read page. I am keeping with the theme of doing a bookshelf. Last year I had one page set aside for this, and this year since I want to be reading even more, I decided to set aside two pages. And I'm also adding a few doodles that aren't just books in there, like a little plant and a camera. And I'm using colored pencils to color in the shelves. Hopefully by the end of this year there will be 52 or more books colored in. So I will write the name of the book on each of the spines in the picture and then I will color them in as I read them. To go along with that, I have a page for readathons and read-alongs. On this page, I'm going to write down the dates and the names of the readathons that I want to participate in and use it as kind of a master list. And then once the readathon comes along, it will get its own page to record what books I plan on reading and how much I actually read. Next is the movies page. Last year, I did these little tickets that I think I had seen somebody on Pinterest do, and I really liked that idea, so I'm going to stick with it. So on each ticket, I'll write down the name of the movie I want to watch, and then once I've seen it, I will fill it in. 
Last year I used all different colors, but this year I'm going to stick with just the color red for these because I think it looks a bit more authentic, like a movie ticket stub or just those like basket raffle ticket stubs. And I added a little popcorn bucket because I think it's cute. And next to that page, I have a space to write down the TV shows that I want to watch. This also includes Netflix. I don't think I need to separate those. And then I, of course, had to make a page for YouTube video ideas. Last year I filled up one whole page, so this year I am dedicating two pages to this, so hopefully I'll at least fill up one. And then here I am filling out the index. There are a few other things I might add later on, but for now what's in black are the set in stone things that I am definitely doing, and I've already included. Now moving on to the January setup. So last year I started with a very similar setup to this. I wanted to kind of revamp it and do something slightly different but pretty much the exact same. So I'm doing a moon and stars sort of theme. I found that I don't really use the traditional calendar setup very much. I find this list view to be much more useful to me. I used a gold marker to outline most things. I'm using watercolor to color in the background. And then for the weekly setups, I decided to do different phases of the moon. And I did look up which phase the moon would be in at the start of each of these weeks. So I thought it would be kind of accurate. And then I'm also including some little sort of star banners. Also using my January stamp and some of the number stamps as well. Here's an example of a mistake or something I didn't end up liking, so I covered it up with washi tape. I was originally going to use gold stars for where the numbers of the week would go, and I quickly decided I didn't like the way that looked, so I broke out some washi tape and covered that up, and I like that a lot better. And I ended up doing that on all of the pages, and I just put a line to divide the days. And here's me stamping the dates on. And then I write the days of the week underneath, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. And now going back to the very beginning. Um, last year I had started with a page that had a dream catcher on it that said hello 2018. And I decided I wanted to do sort of an homage to that. Instead of coloring with watercolor straight onto the paper, I used watercolor paper first and cut out the circle and then some feathers. And I just glue those on using a little bit of Mod Podge. And then I decorate them a bit with my gold marker, the white gel pen, and the Pigma Micron pen. And with that, my notebook is officially set up. I might eventually put my name in the beginning, but I don't find that necessary right now. Um, but I've got my index set up. I am pretty happy with the dream catcher. I might add a quote later on. I'm super happy with the pixels page, resolutions. I'm excited for the Polaroids. Future log is very simple, but it does its job. I can't wait until all the books are filled out, and I'm really excited to start using this journal. And 
that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I will have another video up soon. So see you then. Bye.